morning ladies and gentlemen warm regards to everybody present here today i would also like to convey my best wishes to the organizers of commercial women forum i think it's an important and thoughtful initiative to bring together the commercial rifle industry especially in these unprecedented and challenging times but this industry over the years has weathered many storms very easily and this has made us all stronger and more resilient i would also like to take the opportunity to salute all the players in this industry be it the oems component suppliers fleet owners or drivers for their passion and their perseverance especially in the last two years of crisis <coughs> If there is one thing that we could not achieve in the last two years, it was to meet in person and exchange ideas with each other face to face. So when I was invited to be a part of this conference, the first thing that struck me that it was a physical meeting and the theme of the conference, the Great Indian Series Safari. I think this theme aptly captures. the spirit with which all of us should engage exchange ideas share perspectives and chart out the future course of our industry but as you have already mentioned the industry today is at the cusp of transformation mobility as we have known over the decades is undergoing a fundamental change from the drawing board to the reality and let us not forget that we all have one shared responsibility and that is to take this industry ahead and in the right direction towards unprecedented growth now before i touch on some important aspects that will shape the course of our industry let us all take a moment to recount where it all started from speaking of the 19th century on the left of this slide you can see many contraptions these were the first automobiles designed by men In fact, the first truck in the world was designed by Gottfried Daimler way back in the year 1896. After the invention of the steam engine, which was the basis of the first industrial revolution, this invention was probably the most important when it came to industrial development. The image on the right side of the slide is the first truck which was launched in India in the year 1954 by Daimler-Benz Germany. That is what we were called at that time. We collaborated with the erstwhile Telco, and these trucks were named Tata Mercedes Benz trucks. So in a way, Daimler truly sold the genes of trucking in India and in the world. And back then, the Indian CV industry was small and mostly stagnant until the end of the 20th century. not going beyond 100000 units a year the last two decades has witnessed the industry grow at a much faster pace in fact if you remember in 2018 we saw the peak with close to a million units sold in india with the gray line on this chart represents the medium and heavy commercial vehicles and the red line represents the light commercial vehicles or lcvs and the blue line is simply the total of And then the last two years, as we all know, were tough due to the pandemic. Sales dropped by almost 50% to half a million units in 2020. And in last year, the market recovered thankfully to a close to 700,000 units, yet remained below the level achieved in 2018. There are two important takeaways for all of us looking at this history. First one: the CV industry in India is very strong. much more than any other market in the world and second in spite of these cycles the industry is fundamentally on a growth path in india the most relevant question for all of us is where is the industry at the point what is in store for the short term and what are the long term perspectives and i will talk about that now when well, earlier last week uh, the gdp figures for the last financial year were released India achieved a growth of 8.7 percent, which was more than any other country in the world. In the middle of this uncertainty and the challenges, India is 
and will be the fastest growing economy in the world. And that means the CV industry is headed for a strong growth in the years to come. There will be disruptions or setbacks on, on the way, but fundamentally the growth story remains intact. And it has never been as good as it is right now. Now that is short term in terms of what is the potential of India in the long term? And this slide actually shows that potential. If you simply plot the population of a country to the number of trucks sold, you find a direct correlation between them. And you can see that with the advanced economies on the bottom left of this slide. And then if you draw a line and take it upwards, you will find China right on that line. Largest population and the largest truck market in the world. Now look at India, second largest population and the CV volumes are roughly one fifth of China. Interestingly, the scale is similar if you compare the GDP of both countries. GDP of China is close to 15 billion dollars and India is close to 3 billion dollars. Again, one fifth. The question then is, when will we reach that magic number? What is actually holding us back? There are two main things. Availability of infrastructure and increase in private consumption led by growth of disposable income. And both these are getting addressed right now. The government of India as we all know has set an ambitious target of taking our economy to $5 billion before the end of this decade. In fact, IMF has recently said that this is possible even by the end of financial year 2027. And as the economy grows, so will be the disposable income of people. This will result in an increase in per capita consumption, which will support demand generation for CDs. On the infrastructure fund, government has budgeted close to 7.5 lakh crores in the current financial year, which is 25% more than the previous financial year. Numerous projects for expressways or highways and multi-modal logistics paths are being planned and executed as we speak. The rise of hub and spoke model finally is going to increase demand for heavy duty trucks for long haul and light duty trucks for distribution and last mile operations. Both these segments will mature and sharpen with infrastructure growth driving this transformation. Now, what does this all mean? This means we are looking at close to 1.5 to 2 million units for the Indian CV industry in the next decade. The fundamentals of the CV business therefore are very, very strong at this point. In fact, I believe that we are at an infection point and the best years of this industry are ahead of us. Now, apart from growth, the industry is also undergoing a fundamental transformation, as I mentioned earlier. So, what will be the key trends that will shape this journey? And let us try to analyze some of these. Well, data and connectivity will be a game changer for increasing the operational efficiency of logistics operations. This will especially benefit the large fleet operators in planning their operations with minimal downtime. The last mile deliveries will become more seamless and efficient. Today, logistics costs in India are estimated to be 13 to 14 percent of our GDP, while in Germany it is 8 to 10 percent. Imagine the benefit it brings to the entire manufacturing if we are able to bridge that gap in the next years. The second one, alternate fuels and shift to carbon neutral mobility. <coughs> this will be the most disruptive change for the industry. In fact, what we are looking at is what I call a cocktail of fuels. We are talking about biodiesel, CNG and LNG, hydrogen, ice or fuel cell and electric propulsion. Each fuel type has its merits and demerits, and the timeline for this shift is still a matter of debate and deliberation. We do not have the technological maturity, scale, ecosystem, or infrastructure for a full shift to any one or two of the fuels, and this limitation has caused a transition phase where all these op options will coexist. It is also driven by the need for energy security of our country. But as sustainability targets become increasingly important, 
more and more companies will move towards complete decarbonization of their business and their products. The next and possibly the most interesting trend will be servitization. Where just 10 to 12 years ago, was it possible for us to imagine a lodging company that owns no properties or a cab company that owns no cars? But it happened. Asset light businesses flourished and we are going to see them penetrating in more and more sectors. Logistics sector will also move in this direction and reduce their capex burden and evolve to a pay per kilometer model. In fact, we see that starting with buses already. Truck as a service, therefore, could be the operating model in future for all of us. Well, other than that, in the mid to long term, the industry has to think of ways and means to make our supply chains more transparent, agile, and resilient. Right from manufacturers like us, who are already taking a fresh look at their supply chains, as an industry, we have to think how do we create more dependable and cost competitive supply chains in India and beyond. This will not only help the industry to grow, but also help the entire country in terms of improving our manufacturing cost and be more competitive globally. Let me now give you some insights into what Daimler Truck is doing at a global level in some of these aspects. Well, we have already taken a lead in decarbonization of transport globally. Our stated aim is to be carbon neutral in the drive markets by 2039. In fact, we recently launched the Mercedes-Benz e across long haul truck. It has a range of about 500 km on a single charge. It is scheduled to be ready for series production in 2024. In North America, our all-electric freight liner e Cascadia has entered into series production already and has done a rigorous testing of more than 1.6 million km. Similarly, Fuso e Kenta, the light duty truck, is currently being sold in four continents around the world. On the hydrogen front, we are also making the rapid progress. We have done a joint venture with Volvo and formed a company called Cell Centric. The first enhanced prototype of the Mercedes Benz Gen H2 truck is on the test track since late April last year. And the customer trials are planned in 2023. All this technology development will also help us in India when we develop the products for this market as and when it is ready. On the autonomous driving front, Daimler Truck has partnered with Vimo and Torp Robotics in US for developing level 4 autonomous trucks. A dedicated autonomous technology group has been created which is developing the automated driving strategy and creation of an appropriate infrastructure for its use. Before I end, I would like to mention a simple yet profound quote by John C. Maxwell. He said, change is inevitable, growth is optional. In fact, the change is happening in front of us as I speak. It is now up to all of us to embrace it, make ourselves and our organizations future ready. With that, I would now like to declare the commercial vehicle forum open. I urge all participants to take full advantage of the expertise and the thought leadership in the room. Thank you very much for having me here today. Let the safari begin.